Welcome to day two of the 2012 Rally Sweden. I'm Colin Clark and joining me from the stage is Julian Porter. Well, the world's best may be taking on snow and ice, but these forest stages are some of the fastest on the WRC calendar. Speeds in excess of 220 kilometers an hour and temperatures approaching 30 degrees below. This is the ultimate winter test for both man and machine. Well, day one turned into a battle between the two Finnish stars and former teammates, Miko Harvinen now at Citroen and Yari Mati Latvala at Ford. Neither driver wanted to lose face and both were out to prove their car was quicker. Maximum attack was the only answer and over the course of the day the lead changed hands three times. Due to the final stage of the day and with the gravel starting to appear on the road, Harvinen's Michelin snow tyres deteriorated quickly. Latvala had managed his tyres better and with that the overnight lead went the way of Ford and Yari Mati. That late frustration for Herven and saw Latvala pull out the gap up front to 16.8 seconds with Perez Solberg just 1.8 seconds behind in second place. Only Loeb, Citroen and Patrick Sandell's mini break Ford's dominance in the top 10. After day one's trip to Norway, day two sees the cars return to the traditional Swedish stages. Eight lay ahead, including two runs of the Vargas in stage, which takes in the famous Collins Crest jump. In total, the drivers will cover 117 competitive kilometers today. We also see the return of the reverse running order at the starting grid to remove any disadvantage to the overnight leader for being first on the road. So once again, Brazilian Paulo Norbury leads the pack away, followed by Richard Gornson and Oik Tanak, all returning under the Rally 2 rules. But we have to look forward towards the bottom of the running order to find our leaders. Salzburg. It's back out in the traditional roads in Sweden's farmland region for some of this event's classic stages. None more so than the legendary Vargas stage, the site for one of the WRC's most iconic arenas at Collins Crest, named after Scottish rallying royalty Colin McRae. The fans are there in huge numbers, and Jules, Oit Tanak. Well, he's a rising star for sure. Yes, that is. He's fighting back from a day one off, though. And Tanak displaying typically aggressive style over that jump. He's definitely back up to speed. It's a terrific run for the young Estonian in Vargasen. Few problems from yesterday, Jules, but he's looking good today. He is looking good so far, anyway. He's had a good run this morning. Great start from Oik Tanak. Back on the start line, Josie, and it's our eight times world champion, Sebastian Loeb. A difficult day for him yesterday. It was a difficult day for him, the greatest driver of them all. And uh, he's never really mastered the snow and ice of Sweden, only winning once. But he's fighting back from that day one off yesterday. He's down in seventh at the minute. Unbelievable. He'll be looking to make up a few positions, I'm sure, today, uh, Josie. But, well, Henning Solberg's the man in front of him, and he's got to catch Henning Solberg. He knows these stages well. He goes well on the snow and ice. Yeah, the Norwegian veteran. He knows a thing or two about these winter rallies from Norway. He's not giving up that sixth place, you know, without a fight. You know, he's had one of his podiums, one of his six podiums on the Norwegian snow. Now in Sweden, he's got a fight with Mr. Lowe. I think he's been as quick as he wanted to be this weekend, Jules. I don't know, he's always said he's happy at stage end, so Henning just enjoys everything, doesn't he? He just loves it. But just look at him over Collins Crest. Fantastic stuff. And another driver who's enjoying himself this weekend, Evgeny Novikov. Hugely impressive this year. His maturity, Jules, has been incredible. It has. He's got one of the most experienced co-drivers alongside him as well with Denny Giraudet. I mean, the M-Spot driver, he's calmed down recently. It's amazing, this maturity. And he had problems this morning with the windscreen misting up. I tell you what, uh, he's really gone well, but just look at him. Denny Giraudet, listen to Giraudet. Giraudet, we've got to remember, has sat in with so many experienced drivers. Yeah, for sure. Young Evgeny Novikov making the most of Giraudet's experience, and he is coming on in leaps and bounds, finding now, Joe, some consistency. Yeah, he's in a comfortable fifth place because of it. What about Mads Osberg, Jules? He took a podium place here uh, last year. He was second last year, wasn't he? He was second last year, but you know, Mads' day didn't start well at all. He had a puncture on the road section to the first stage, and he had a right-hand spare, and he had to put the right-hand spare onto the left rear. So he said he never really felt he had the confidence in the car in the back end there. But, I mean, 
I think Still an aggressive run though, look at it. Well, I think that kind of thing, Jules, it upsets you before the start of the stage. It's difficult to get into a rhythm when you know something's not quite right on the car. Well, yeah, he wasn't so happy at the end of the stage, if I'm honest. And he, he, it was affecting his mind. But listen to Johannes on the end of pace notes on this stage. <laughs> Look how fast this is. This is real impressive from the young Norwegian. Remember, his mindset's been upset a little bit at the start. He's quicker so far. Yeah, great time through that stage. But, well, for sure, it's going to put a bit of pressure on Petter Solberg, his countryman, Jules. 14 seconds ahead of Osberg, too big a gap. Well, Petter saying at the end of the stage that he made a couple of mistakes in there. A constant grip and uh, it's just changing all the time. It's uh, just a rhythm that he can't get into. And it seems to be worrying Petter a little bit at stage ends. He's only five seconds down on Osberg in here. Yeah, Petter's pace just fading slightly, Jules, and maybe that gives Miko Harvner a bit of breathing space. Certainly the chance to push on and try and catch Latvala in front of him. Well, that's it, he's got to gain that time. He lost it on day one, he wants it all back now, doesn't he? And uh, he's got almost 17 seconds to make up. But Mikko's pushing hard. Remember, he won three stages yesterday. Yeah, for sure. second rally in the car. Second rally in the car, he was fourth in Monte Carlo. Just a few weeks ago, Mikko Harvner with something to prove here, I think, Jules. He's got a lot to prove, obviously, he won that rally in Norway the weekend before, and he's a little test. And uh, Mikko and Yama working well. Yama heavy on the pace notes here. Amazing how much information they put into these pace notes, particularly on the tighter, twistier sections. It's just so high speed as well. Well, here we go, Jules. It's our rally leader, Yari Mati Latvala, on the start line. He's got to be focused and ready for this battle today. He has, and these boys, him and Hervenen, they are the best of the world on this surface in this form. It's just incredible. Not one of them willing to give an inch all day yesterday. And I suspect we're going to have it exactly the same again today. Yeah, really, it was... Well, the lead changed hands so many times yesterday. The two of them at the top giving away tenths of a second, the odd second here and there. Uh, but uh, for sure, Latvala is going to have to be on it today. Right, he needs to be on it. Mikko's coming for him, that's for sure. We've got a split time coming up here soon. Yari, he's going to lose a little bit of time there. He looks so concentrated though, doesn't he, Jules? But do you know, maybe that tight, twistier section at the start of this stage, maybe suiting the more nimble DS3 a little better than the Fiesta. Sitting Herman and over Collins Crest there. I'm sure there's a few fins out there supporting these two. Which one they'll be picking, I'm not really sure. Oh, I think I can see some Finnish flags in the crowd there, Jules. A few Swedish flags as well, a few Norwegian flags flying. That's it, Mikko's kept the foot down in the final few kilometres. The stage is cleared. Well, did you think he's done enough? Oh, yeah, it's Yari I'm fighting for. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I tried. I tried to push really hard, but obviously, uh, you know, he can see my splits and definitely he's fighting back. But I'll try. I'll really re try to keep pressure on him and, uh, you know, go as fast as I can. He says, Jules, he didn't sound too confident there. Maybe losing a bit of momentum. Yeah, probably, it maybe he is. I mean, Latvala over the crest there, really neat and tidy. The stage opens out towards the end here, and Yari said to me that he prefers the much more open stages. He's just not quite sure on the tight stuff, but he's cleared the stage there. Let's see what he has to say. <laughs> First 10 kilometers, very twisty. It's always going very bad for me, but after that, I find a good rhythm on the, on the fast, wider road. And what about the next one? That's a fast, wider road as well. Yeah, I like talking. I like the fast, fast stuff. is is good for me. I need to be a bit more careful on the narrow ones. So let's have a look at the leaderboard. Well, Yari pulls another couple of seconds ahead of Miko. And behind the fins, the battle of the Norwegians has closed up as well. Osberg is now within nine seconds of Peter Solberg. What a start it's been to day two here in Sweden. Latvala and Hervner are at it again. Join us after the break. The action has only just started.
Welcome back to the Varmland region of Sweden with Ford, Jari Mati Latvala leading the way. We now move on to another pair of Swedish rally classics, Sagan and Fredericksburg. Well, it's been an event for weekend, Josie, so far for Oit Tanak. He seems to be getting well acquainted with the Swedish countryside. Yes, well, there's his shovel. He's had that out a few times. It's a learning year for Oit in the WRC car this season. It's been a tough weekend. Oh, and he's just drifted wide. That's another mistake for Tanak. I don't think he's getting that out. You know what is coming out next, don't you? The shovel. That doesn't look good for Oit Tanak. No, he's I going to be in there a while. There didn't look to be many people around. And do you know what, Josie? Sebastian Loeb, well, he suffered, suffered a similar incident to that yesterday. Yeah, he did. He's been pushing really, really hard, obviously, straight on into that snowbank yesterday. And maybe Seb just pushing a little bit too hard. Oh, he's just gone. So a spin. I tell you what, that is very, very rare. A spin for Loeb in a stage. That's two in two days so far. Yeah, that is most unusual. But he recovers it well, Josie. It took him a little while to get out there, but he recovers that one well. Yeah, he does, but what you want to make sure is you don't get stuck in the snowbank trying to recover it. That's the difficult thing here. Get lost in the snow dust. Yeah. Well, Evgeny Novikov, he remains in fifth place. Jules, it's been an anonymous weekend by his standards. Nothing too dramatic. No, no, he, he's so mature. It's incredible the difference this year to last year to Novikov. A little bit wide there, having a bit of a moment, but he has had a couple of little problems with this windscreen not demisting 100 percent he didn't really know why but I'll tell you what he's dealt with it so calmly yeah, great stuff from Evgeny Novikov <laughs> Peter Solberg Jules at the start of the stage looking good over Collins Crest there's a big jump there for, for Petter in there a lot of ice and rut still though it's a, it's a wild ride in that car. <laughs> it is still hunting down potentially that second place. Martin Prokop goes just his third event in a world rally car. He's not one for the snow and ice. No, he's always said it's not really his favourite surface. Go back to the battle at the front, and Miko Harvenen is the man leading the charge for the Citroen team. Back on the ground, and Miko's looking neat and tidy through the spectacular sequence of press. Well, he's desperate to close the gap to his former teammate, Yari Mati Latvala. It's more than just a psychological battle between the two pins now. This is about who is the quickest and who wants it the most. He really, really does want it. Let's just listen to these boys here. They're trying to keep the car in the rut, it's so important. Particularly on these high-speed sections, Jules. But yeah, it's like being stuck in the railroad. Let's hear from him then, Jules, at the end of the stage. Well, I, I really love it. Really good, have a, you know, nice to have a good fight and, and be able to go fight with, with new cars as well, so I'm very pleased even for this, but... For sure, I want to, you know, try to take some time out of him, put some pressure on him, so uh, and it's good, it's good. Well, back with our rally leader now, Julesy, and it's uh, a great shot from the helicam. That's the lake at Fredericksburg. What a shot that is. Yeah, Yari Matti in car now. Him and Mika Antler fully on it here. And this, these two guys who have the charge forward, desperate to take some time out of Herven. And obviously, former teammates, the pair of them. And this is a real battle royal. It is a battle royal. Two Finns, two young Finns, both having won this event before, both wanting to add to their tally of wins. Well, Latvala's first ever World Rally win was here. He's coming to the end of the stage. 1.9 slower. Is that his advantage? Chopped to 18 seconds. Mikko was doing a very good set. I didn't, I didn't have a comfortable feeling at all. It felt very, very slippy and uh, difficult to get the grip on this stage, so I took it a bit, bit too steady. Uh, I know at the beginning of the stage I need to improve. Well, it's on to the Hag Fours sprint, Josie, just 1.9 kilometers, a memorable stage for this young man. Yeah, Ike Tanak, the young Estonian, he claims his first ever WRC stage win here. You know what? That's seven different stage winners we've had so far this weekend. Go on, Jules, quickly go through them for us. Oh, hang about. Loeb, Latvala, Solberg, Sordo, Sordo, Tanak, 
Well, we're almost there. Let's then have a look at the leaderboard now. Latvala pulled out another six tenths of a second on Hovland and Hagfors, and Petter Solberg is slightly further away from Osberg. Further back, that spin means Loeb is still stuck in seventh behind Solberg. Well, a short drive to the service park in Hagfors Airport follows, and a respite for the two men fighting for victory in what is becoming an increasingly psychological battle. Now, you've been teammates with Miko for a long time. I mean, have you thought about what's going on inside his head? A bit of psychological warfare? It is uh, it's a little bit of a mental game between the stages. Uh, we talk, but it's, it's more serious than earlier when we were teammates. So you don't talk, talk about the, the setup changes anymore. I, I really try to stitch him up on uh, between the stages, but, uh, but you know, he's getting older and more experienced as well, so it's not so easy anymore. Because you know Ford inside and out. I mean, really, you must have an edge. Well, I'll, let's see. I'll try to do something. But like I said, you know, they are, he's been very consistent in the last, uh, especially end of last year, so uh, it's not so easy anymore to, to make him nervous. Well, something that Rally Sweden has always had in abundance are the wonderful fans. They travel from all over the Scandinavian countries to line the forest stages with their fellow WRC supporters and take in the rally atmosphere. These guys don't need music to have a party. A snow-filled forest and some rally cars jumping through the air is all that is required. And it's at the famous Collins Crest Jump in Fargassen that each year thousands of fans flock to celebrate the WRC. We have uh, been here uh, from uh, yesterday and we sleep in our uh, tent. It's not just the snow and fast flowing stages that make Rally Sweden so special. The loyalty of the Scandinavian supporters makes this round of the WRC unmissable. Very slippery, I see. Very icy. Icy, icy. So with the fans ready and waiting for the second pass over Collins Crest, one driver who's really struggled to make it to them is Armando Arujo. Jules, seven minutes late out of service. Yeah, they had to change the exhaust manifold on Arujo's car. But I'll tell you what, they're still not sounding 100% fit in there. Patrick Sandel, Jules, making his debut in a World Rally car here. Yeah, he is, and uh, the former junior champion is going to catch Araujo in here, I think, because Araujo is not going so quickly. Well, the Araujo's car yeah, he's been is slowed a... down. Oh, hang about. Araujo is off, and uh, oh, he's gone off again. Oh. Whilst Patrick was passing him, he went into the ditch to let Patrick pass. It's a good teammate for you. Yeah, I, I really like this stage the second time through. Much better rhythm all the time, but I. Lost maybe five seconds because Armindo was parked in the middle of the road after he went off. But when he, I came, he went down in the ditch again. So I thank you for that. <laughs> well, ahead of Sandel on the leaderboard is Sebastian Loeb. And amazingly, he's languishing down in seventh. Finally, though, the sign of life from the imperious Frenchman in the second pass through Vargas. And he takes 11 and a half seconds out of Henning Solberg. It started OK. I've done a, a good stage. It's hard for the tyre, uh, so we'll have to take care about it, uh, to look and to do the right uh, changes because uh, it will be very hard for the studs until the end of the day. Yeah, Jules, obviously concerns there about the studs from, uh, from Sebastian. Yeah, well, it, the speed they're going at and the gravels are starting to show through in some places. They are going to put it on his way through and Ooh. that was a big moment for Peter Solberg there. He kept his foot fully on the throttle to keep it back in the line. So it was spectacular stuff from the former world champion, that is for sure. Yeah, that was a view of the trees that we didn't really want to see. No, no, unfortunately that will affect his time. And again, he's going to be slightly slower than Mads Osberg. Yeah, Solberg with a bit of time in hand over Osberg, Jules, but he doesn't want to give too much more away. That's it, he doesn't. Let's just listen to Chris Patterson as they disappear off down through the narrow section. There he is over Collins Crest, flat out he is. Go well, back to the fight at the front now, and Latval is on the attack again after the split, Jules. 11 k's, he's nearly 3.3 seconds up. And ahead in the stage, Hervlin flying Jules over Collins Crest one more time. He needs to push, he's got to react to this. 
Latvala before he gets too far away. Mikko is obviously receiving Latvala's space, but Latvala running behind, which obviously just gives him an advantage. That's a heck of a jump over Collins Crest. Yeah, I need to send regards to Cedric, my engineer. The car was absolutely perfect, so uh worked really well. And I tried to be sensible with the tyres as well, so Yarimati might win me a little bit on this one, but let's see overall how it's going to go. Well, a very confident-sounding Nico Hovland there, Jules. Yeah, despite that early surge from Latvala, the rally leader's fast approaching Collins Crest here. So there's one last chance for these fans to cheer him on. Here we go. Oh, I'm not taking too much height there. So a little change in the overall standings for now then. Harvenen remains just under 19 seconds behind Ford's number one. And in the fight for third, Osberg continues to edge closer and closer to Peter Solberg. Well, the frozen forests of Sweden are the playground of the WRC this season. But this famous event is also hosting the second round of the Super 2000 category. A chance now to get you up to date. Jules Piggy Anderson, well, he's hardly put a wheel wrong this weekend. No, that Proton Citra is running fine. It's been flying through the roads of Piggy's home land. It's just been a great day. A few setup issues today. Yeah, that car looks great, the yellow car against the snow. But, oh, that's Craig Breen, Jules, chasing down Piggy Anderson. He's had a decent day, a couple of stage wins. Brilliant commitment over Collins Crest there. But, you know, Craig Breen's done most of the afternoon with a broken front right brake disc. And he actually spun in the final stage because of it. Here's our Swedish wildcard, Pontius Tiedemann, acquitting himself very well, I'd have to say. Yeah, he struggled with understeer today, but it's been another strong day for him. In the second of the yellow protons, it's Alistair McRae. Must be an emotional time for him coming through Collins Crest there, Jules. Obviously famously named after his brother. It's been a disappointing return to Sweden after an eight-year absent. He's already running under the Rally 2 rules. Well, let's have a look at the S2000 leaderboard. McRae is currently down in seventh, but up front, Anderson's lead still stands at well over two minutes, with Breen in a comfortable second place. And Tidmund in the final podium position. We're back to the big boys now at the front, Julesy and Sebastian Loeb has, uh, well, he's going to have to look after his studs. It's a car looking very unbalanced there. Yeah, it's not been a great weekend for Loeb. It's uh, been a tough one and always, I don't know, Sweden seems to be his bogey event. And last year, he was in sixth at the end of the day, at the end of the rally, he had punctures and all sorts of problems. It's just been a real difficult one for him. It's uh, just not what you expect from him. You hit anything? No, I, yes, I stood on the road, but in the line. So I couldn't do anything. I didn't see it. Just when you get a position, you kind of start to have problems. Every time you move up, you go back down. Yeah. Jules, I would think the better Solberg would have hoped to have made a bigger impact today, but he's just not managed to find that pace. Well, he hasn't. He's made some setup changes. Trying to have gone towards Yari Matty's setup. Tell you what, though, it must have worked. Obviously, Yari leading Petter's pace is improved immediately with that change. He's second fastest in stage 16. Mads Osberg there, Jules. He's desperate to try and improve on that second place of last year, but well, he's doing okay in third place. Yeah, he is, but he's had some problems later on today. His car got stuck in launch mode, which is not what he wanted. It's a few hundred meters where it kept misfiring and struggling. This battle for third is going to go down to the wire. Here's our rally leader, Jules Yari, Matti Latvala. Well, he doesn't seem to be too concerned about the studs coming through the final stage of the day. The handling on his Fiesta, well, it looks to be pretty true to me. Well, that's it. Yari's saying, though, today that he's the, the Sorgan stage was more ice-based and he wanted the decent studs for then. He wasn't so bothered about the next one because it was more a snowy stage. So Latvala trying to think about the best way of taking time out of Hervenen. Well, and Mikko Hervenen, Perhaps Jules, looking after his studs in the first couple of stages in the afternoons, look to try and conserve the tyres. Yeah, his final proper stage today, Mikko takes 2.6 back out of him. It's the fastest time overall, but he didn't make a lot of impact. But it's interesting, the two different drivers 
two different tyre strategies. Miko keeping the good ones for the night stage. Well, let's hear what Miko had to say at the end of that stage. You've run kind of a different strategy to Yari Matti on the tyres. Has it worked? Well, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I know my tyres are completely shagged at the moment. I don't, I don't have any any stats left, but. We'll see if it, if it works out and okay, we still have one short stage to go, which is very icy and you know, it can be very tricky over there. Well, let's go to the leaderboard at the end of the day. Another pass through Hagfors Sprint completed the day. So this is how the standings look going into the final overnight break. Latvala's lead stands at 23 seconds, while Solberg's advantage over Osberg is 11.1 seconds. Loeb has managed to hold on to sick despite a late puncture. Are you going to go maximum attack or are you going to think about second in the points for the championship? No, not, not yet. So I'll, I'll still go flat out, especially in the morning and, and see if we can maybe rattle Yari Matti a little bit. And, you know, it's only a small mistake for him and then we are right up there. So uh, I'm still going to push. Now, of course, Mikko wants to win and he's going to attack in the morning to see what is my, my pace. And uh, so I, I, can't, I can't start to back off. I, ha I really need to keep going as I have done today. And what about the championship, though? If you're really fighting for victory tomorrow, you've also got to think longer term for the rest of the year, though. You don't want to roll the car up into a ball, do you? No, no, it's, you really need to think about the championship. It's, but uh, when, if I can carry on like I have done today, then it should be, hopefully, hopefully it would be enough. And I have a little bit now more marching than yesterday, yesterday evening, so um, gives a little bit more, more confidence for tomorrow, but... For sure, I need to be really wake up from the first stage on. So the rally win is still up for grabs here in Sweden. It looks like a Finn is going to win, but will it be Latvala or will it be Hervonen? Well, you'll have to join us tomorrow for the final day's highlights to find out. Eight-time world champion Sebastian Loeb got his campaign for ninth straight title off to a great start with victory on the Monte Carlo Rally. But the Frenchman's new Citroen teammate Mika Havonen has won the last two editions of the Rally Sweden. And Ford's Yuri Marti Latvala and Petter Solberg would also be stout contenders for the top spot in the only proper snow rally of 2012. Be sure to join the High Speed Television channel for the daily reports of round two of the WRC Rally Sweden. That's Friday, February the 10th through Sunday, February the 12th from 10.35 in the evening.